than the other issue. Somebody biting a Pop-Tart into the shape of a gun and getting suspended, he's got no problem with that. Look at this story. Texas teen sent to in-school suspension for having an American flag t-shirt. Is Are they going to get an invitation to the White House? Absolutely not. But the kid that they can blame this on anti-Muslim feelings gets a ticket to the White House. But of course, the press says Donald Trump is completely wrong. There is no war on Christianity. We are not lifting up Islam in this country. Look, we understand what's going on. And that's the key to the popularity of Donald Trump. He points out the glaringly obvious elephant in the room, and he doesn't back down. And the question is, why aren't the other candidates doing this? I cannot understand why we don't see the other candidates doing this. They are cowered down by this political correctness that is coming from the Democrats, coming from the media. While all this is going on, while we're inviting a kid who has a clock, a suitcase clock that looks very much like a suitcase bomb with wires and timers and a lot of electronic stuff. Why would you put a large clock like that that looks, if you look at the pictures, it looks like the traditional Hollywood suitcase bomb. Why would he do that? And then again, as I said, the connections with his father being part of a uh, anti-Islamophobic group. Very suspicious, very suspicious. And the hypocrisy of the Obama administration and not standing up to any of these other situations in school that are clearly over the top. That is the smoking gun. But of course, this reminder that if you retweet ISIS, you could go to jail. And this is coming from a tech publication pointing out that a guy who merely tweeted about ISIS, maybe he's a terrorist, maybe he isn't. But the speech is the issue. If they can take a group that they have funded, that they continue to fund, that they created, if they can shut people down for that, they can come after you for anything. Joining me now is Anthony Gucciardi. In the next hour, we're going to have Alex Jones joining us with a report, uh, something that happened with the TSA as part of his travels. But I'm sure he wants to also uh, report it in and thank everyone for their support through the money bomb. It's been overwhelming, the support that we've seen from you. And, of course, we are extending. Alex has extended the free shipping till midnight tonight as a way to say thank you. Also, the specials that are there, we have many different specials. We've got... 25% uh, off Survival Shield X2. It was sold out, but we got an emergency shipment in, so now that's back available. 25% off of that, 25% off of DNA Force, 30% off of Super Male Vitality. And we also have 15% off of Deep Cleanse, Secret 12, Oxy Powder, 20% off of Brain Force and Silver Bullet. We've got those specials. We're extending those as well as the free shipping till tonight as a way to say thank you for your support. Thank you so much for helping us reach this goal so that we can launch a satellite broadcasting network uh, that's going to be free to air for television stations to pick up the radio show as well as the nightly news. And before I go to Anthony, because I want to get his comments on this, there's a new story out from the New York Times about how McDonald's is now leading the corporate effort to publicize the plights of migrants in the EU. Because, you know, that's we all have to be concerned about how they're going to be fed in Europe. We can't stop the war in Syria and then give them food there and then butt out and leave them alone. No, we have to destroy their country, have a massive humanitarian wave uh, come into Europe, and then they're going to get, guess what? McDonald's food. <laughs> what could be better? I mean, they've got McDonald's along with DreamWorks, MasterCard, and Facebook. This is the World Food Program, they said. Uh, I would say, looking at this, it looks a bit self-serving. But uh, I guess we could ask them, Anthony, uh, do you want fries with that interventionist war? I, I don't know. <laughs> but here's the thing. That's a good one. <laughs> Millions of migrants desperate to escape war, starvation, persecution, have risked their lives in rickety rafts or in the case of human smugglers. Thousands have died during the journey. Others have been trapped at border crossings and in camps. Well, yeah, let's, let's stop the war. Let's not... Let's understand what the cause of this is rather than just giving them a McDonald's hamburger. And I, before I go to you, I've got, because along this line, there was a uh, headline story coming out of The Onion, a satire uh, site many people are familiar with. But study finds average American inadvertently eats equivalent of eight pieces of fruit per year. <laughs> They say uh, the study finds a typical person accidentally ingests small fruit fragments or pureed fruit chunks when they 
are mixed in with certain meals or snacks like yogurt or Hawaiian pizza, which over the course of 12 months adds up to about eight whole pieces of fruit. And one of the people they in their fictional study here, they say in the satire, Samson assured the public that while the thoughts of unintentionally chewing or swallowing that amount of fruit might make them feel squeamish or repulsed, uh, these minute quantities of plant-based substances over the course of hundreds of meals would have very little impact on their health. He says, when people learn the foods they eat every day might contain tiny parts or scraps of fruit, they tend to feel queasy. However, most Americans never even notice, and the body naturally flushes out fruit and fruit residue the same way it would a cinnamon roll or a chicken nugget. <laughs> 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 so that's the state of nutrition. But we got McDonald's. It's going to make it all better. They're going to help the uh, the people who have been driven out of their country in this war. They're going to give them uh, some food, quote unquote. <laughs> right. Well, I think McDonald's should fix their problems at home before they go ahead and try to give the refugees their toxic meals. Yeah. And, you know. It's funny that Onion says that. I think it is has some validity to that, of course, that people really aren't eating fruit. But at the same time, it's interesting, David, how we see such tangible success when it comes to the things like the food movement. Because mm -hmm. McDonald's is bleeding so much cash right now, they don't actually report their losses each month anymore. They don't yes. even let the uh, public know how much they're, they're losing because no one wants their junk anymore. Yes. That is why they're trying to do these PR moves. And I think you had another article about how yes. they're going to transform their line of food within the next 10 years. Well, they're 10 years too late. Yeah. They are 10 years too late. There's a reason they keep losing money, and there's a reason people are going to other outlets. Even if it's a fast food place, they're like, well, at least it's not McDonald's. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. they had their chance. They had their chance to have actually high-quality ingredients. But instead, like many companies, unfortunately, they decided to cut costs down to a penny per unit instead of getting higher-quality stuff. And they're paying the price for that. Exactly. This other story that you alluded to is one that came out. Uh, Friday evening on InfoWars, investors demand McDonald's ban the use of antibiotics in its meat. And they say just days after McDonald's said that it will shift to cage-free eggs over the next decade. That's the caveat there. Absurd. Over the next decade. Absurd. And it all comes <laughs> down to that cost prohibiting thing we just talked about. Oh, well, it would cost three cents for us to change next year. Yeah, exactly. Right? It, it would cost 2.7 cents for us to change next year. I think they need to understand that they're going to starve out pretty quick. They need to really make a radical change. Yeah. And it, it, a lot of people realize that they're supporting good companies these days. They know they want to support the independent companies, not the ones owned by Coca-Cola and Pepsi, like Suja Juice, which I used to drink all the time. Just a big portion of it got out by, bought out by, I believe it was Coca-Cola or Pepsi. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. It, it, yeah. See, no one knows these things. And mm -hmm. at the same time, it also inspires me to see things like the money bomb raise so much money, to see things like super high quality products raise so much cash because people actually want to support those things. Yes. And, you know, I was just talking to Alex earlier today, and he's so thankful. He's, I mean, he's going to come on and tell, tell everyone, but he's so thankful for everything that, you know, you guys have done, the listeners raising this money, getting the satellite out there. I'm thankful, too, to see him having such a major success and to see it's really a humanity level success, though, right? Yeah, because it's reaching yes. 400 plus million people. It's helping others that would have never, never been exposed to this stuff. But you imagine flipping through the channels mm -hmm. and you have some CNN puppet up there saying, you know, today and blah, 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 forest fires, blah, blah. And the next one, you're like, we're not going to take it anymore. 1776. What are, what are people going to be drawn to? Exactly. They're going to be drawn exactly. to the real news media. Well, you know, these stories and even the one that I had there that was the parody from The Onion saying, you know, average Americans are appalled to find out that they're getting the equivalent of eight pieces of fruit. The average American is not looking at what's in their food. They're having the wool pulled over their eyes, but there's enough people that have woken up because, as you're pointing out, getting the information out there. That's what we want to do with this information. We want to try to get this out there, get people to wake up to what's being put into their food, get them to wake up to what's being put into their government, how the Constitution is being shredded. All these different ways that people are being deceived because of the corporate sponsors who are working with the big pharmaceutical sponsors who are working uh, with the mainstream media, 75% of their revenue has been estimated comes from big pharma. I've got another article here that I'm going to talk about later about how the new uh, head of the FDA that Obama has picked has, still hasn't uh, been um, uh, ratified yet by the, by the Senate or whoever is going to do it. But nevertheless, this new person that he has picked has deep ties to pharmaceutical companies. A he's lot of them he's do. the most deeply tied person uh, in history until you, in recent history until you go back to the very beginnings. Actually, the the organization just before we had the FDA, the head of that um, I forget what it was called at the time, but it was it was the name was changed to the FDA. Uh, but the person who was heading it at the time they changed uh, took a 180 on fluoride. That was the former head of Alcoa. 
And so they were trying to get rid of toxic waste that was a byproduct of aluminum. Well, David, and so they completely like changed the... Alcoa sounds like, are you with Al-Qaeda? I don't know. Did but that's it? what changed it. It was that kind of regulatory capture, that kind of crony capitalism. And now it looks like that's the kind of guy that Obama is going to be appointing for the next food and drug administration. The people overseeing all of this are not overseeing it. That's why people need the information. It reminds me of two things. First, it reminds me of the study in 2011 that said organic is just the same as conventional food. Mm -hmm. and that was done by the guy that someone called the father of statistical lies, Ingram Olkin. And this guy developed an algorithm, basically, statistical algorithm to make any study look a different way. And these are yeah. other people's words, not mine. But then what happened is another study, there was a meta-analysis of the original Paxil data the antipsychotic antidepressant drug, anti-anxiety. And they found that the original data for Paxil research found that it was super detrimental, caused massive number of different conditions and diseases. I know people that have serious diseases like vitiligo where your skin turns white, the Michael Jackson uh, syndrome. They, they looked at it again recently, just last week. And they said, well, we can actually have found that out from the original data. It looks like that that data was viewed in a certain specific way for the drug companies. Yeah. So all yeah. of the studies we see these days, they can be interpreted in different ways. That's good and bad. You know, the good mm -hmm. studies, the bad studies, they can be interpreted. It just depends how the researchers want to look at them and where they're getting the funding from. Exactly. And that's the key. Where are they getting the funding from? And that's what we see in the history of uh, this guy that Obama is about to appoint to the FDA. You have a right to know what's going into your food, to know about the drugs that they are telling you that you're going to be force inject with you. They need to have your consent and you need to be informed. That is a fundamental right. If we don't have that, we're nothing but slaves to these masters. That's why it's important for you to have independent information. That's what we strive to do here at InfoWars. Thank you so much for joining us. Anthony Gucciardi, stay with us. In the next hour, we're going to have Alex Jones reporting in. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight on this Sunday, September 20th, 2015. Alex Jones is going to be joining us this hour with a report from the road. And I wanted to follow up on what I was talking to Anthony Gucciardi about, and that is the idea of studies. We were talking about how studies could be manipulated by those who fund them to say basically anything that you want to say. Of course, there was a lot of back and forth in the last GOP debate between Ben Carson and Donald Trump. I think it's cost... Ben Carson, a huge amount of support to take the position that the science is settled on vaccines. I have to say, science is never settled. It is never settled, but especially in a situation involving medications, pharmaceuticals, and vaccines, because the vaccines themselves are constantly being changed, being manipulated, having different additives put into them. The schedules are being changed. The frequency is being changed. The concentration is being changed. So the science is not settled. And even if it were, they can go back and forth and argue the merits of the demerits of different vaccines, different uh, additives or adjuvants that they put into it, preservatives or things to stimulate the immune system that can stimulate adverse reactions. That's what adjuvants are. They found that in many cases, when they would inject people with the vaccines, that their immune system would not have the uh, reaction to produce a passive immunity. So they put adjuvants in, things to irritate the immune system. And some people... That causes a horrendous adverse reaction. So those adjuvants, some of the things that they put in as preservatives, those are constantly being changed. But we have genetic modification being put into vaccines. Anything that could be injected into you now is being called a vaccine. And the reason for that is that they don't have any liability. That was taken away in 1986. Anything they cause call a vaccine is essentially something that is free of liability for the company. So, of course, they're doing that. Now, Cheryl Atkinson is a very, uh, we, we respect her a great deal here at InfoWars. I think Alex has talked to her on a number of occasions. She says, what the news isn't telling you about the vaccine autism studies. She said a new study this week found no link between vaccines and autism. It instantly made headlines on TV news and popular media everywhere. Many build it as the final word once again, disproving the notion that vaccines could have anything to do with autism. But what you didn't learn on the news was that the study was from a consulting firm that lists major vaccine makers among its clients, the Lewin Group. The potential conflict of interest was not disclosed in the paper that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. The study authors simply declared, quote, the Lewin Group operates with editorial independence. Really? Really? 
a consulting lobbying firm, and they act with editorial independence. And she goes on to talk about how, look, there's been a lot of studies that do, quite, do show that there is a link with that. She says there's 21 different scientists. She lists them there. 